All right, guys. So um, I did a little poll earlier today on the reasons why, uh, really wasn't the reason why you follow me, but it was a what, what your daughter needs to work on the most in her defense. And really, uh, in my mind, that's probably the reason why you follow defense lessons. Um, and got a range of responses. A lot of them were for throwing tips, a lot of them for footwork. Probably half of them was uh, for gaining confidence, uh, being louder on the field. So in my mind, that's also confidence. And um, feeling the ball out front. There's a lot of different ones. Um, but one that I've heard a lot is learning how to not be afraid of the ball. And I know that this is probably for most, mostly between like eight to 10 years old, maybe even younger. Um, but just going to talk a little bit about not being afraid of the ball or how I train that with some of my lessons, um, or how I would train it. And, um, it's just going to live my, on my feed. Cause I feel like I, I do answer this question quite a lot. And if this isn't for you, then you don't have to listen to it. Uh, so before I get going into that, I did want to talk about, uh, some lesson spots that have opened up. It's that time of the year where everybody is very busy. Everybody's being pulled a ton of different directions. Um, and I have opened up some new spots really recently. So, um, I've got availability. So normally in the past I've said, Hey, apply on my website and April will most likely get you in. April's my scheduler, most likely to get you in. And then sometimes you have to be put on the wait list right now. Uh, we have actual spots open. So if you've been waiting to try it, if you're within an hour drive of Anaheim, California, uh, come and check us out. You can go to my website, morgan stewartcom slash lessons. You're going to apply, um, especially for next week because it's the week of Thanksgiving. There's going to be people in from out of town. So if you are in from out of town and you want a lesson, we do have spots. I'm not going to be teaching on Thanksgiving, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, someone, someone will be in. So anyways, being afraid of the ball, how do we train it? Uh, biggest thing that I think about is let's talk about why we're afraid of the ball. It's either we have, don't have a ton of experience and we're afraid of actually getting hit in the face. So we're lacking maybe hand-eye coordination or just reps. Two, we just got hit and there's like a little bit of PTSD going on. So two different uh, scenarios, but really similar uh, training techniques going on. So first thing I would do looking at, looking at everything as a progression. Um, I, again, with the reps and hand-eye coordination, I'm taking glove off. I'm doing a uh, tennis ball, just throwing the tennis ball at the player, catch, drop it, catch, drop it, catch, drop it. And then having them develop that, uh, more of that hand-eye coordination, having them throw a tennis ball against the wall, catching it barehanded. Um, and this will work for those players that got hit as well. Like taking uh, the thing that they're afraid of, the actual hard ball, away from the equation for a little bit and having them develop that skill of just hand-eye coordination. Um, and if they have the hand-eye coordination, but they are in that kind of PTSD phase, this helps anyways, just kind of get out, get them out of their head. Cause really this is all like a mental thing, right? Being afraid of the ball. If they do have that hand, hand eye coordination, we're getting them out of that pattern of thinking. So tennis ball, then you move on to maybe a softy ball. Uh, I like, or like a dimple ball, something that's not the actual softball doesn't matter what size it is. Uh, people get really caught up in the size of balls, especially it always happens with like 11 year olds that don't play 10 and under anymore. They're playing with the big girl ball that are the 12 U ball. And they, they are the first ones to say, Oh, this ball is so small. It feels so weird. Okay. But it doesn't matter how big the ball is when you're just catching the ball. When you're throwing it, completely different. Yes, we need to we need to train with the correct size ball to just get a feel of it. But I could talk forever about different size balls 
and the girls learning how to throw the different size balls anyways. But, uh, next step playing with softy balls, bouncy balls, even baseballs, a different kind of implement. That's not, it doesn't matter really if it's as hard, but the softy balls, you're going to get away from like mentally, it's going to hurt that bad if I get hit or I make a mistake. So we're not going right into live or uh, balls hit off the bat. We're going rolls, uh, picks, um, even tosses right at them with the, with now with their glove on. Um, again, there's different factors. We're like taking away and then adding again. So going bare hand tennis ball, don't have the glove on. A lot of times when... Uh, girls are beginners. When they have that glove on their hand, it doesn't really feel part of their hand. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Maybe it's not all the way broken in. Maybe they don't, they, they don't really trust it. As girls get older, they understand or their just body gets acclimated to actually wearing a glove. This is something that we really, really underestimate as instructors, as parents is like, it's actually harder for them to catch the ball with the glove on than it would be with their actual hand. Uh, cause if their hand's not strong enough to close the glove, it's kind of putting them more in harm's way. Uh, they can block it, but they can't really catch it. So lots of things going on here, but fact, uh, back to my steps, I'm getting like sidetracked here. Back to my steps, bare hand tennis ball with glove, softy dimple, baseball picks, rolls, tosses. Then we go to, possibly hitting the softy ball. Then we go to rolls uh, back, backing off from hitting back to rolls with a regular softball. Maybe this is with a flat glove. Maybe this is with a little glove, but this is regular softball, not hitting the ball yet. So notice there's so many different ways to kind of escalate how hard it might be to catch it. And then uh, de-escalate by not hitting it anymore, then escalate again by making it a little bit harder with uh, training implements like flat gloves or little gloves, but making it not as hard by not hitting it. And then we progress all the way to hitting hard balls and live game. So I would say there's a couple different causes for the need to be afraid of the ball. Like if I was, if I was afraid of actually getting hit in the face, cause I my hand-eye coordination was bad or my hand didn't move fast enough to block the ball from hitting me in the face, I probably wouldn't want to play softball. I'd probably be, a, I'd probably be afraid of the ball. Uh, secondly, if you just got hit and your brain is continually telling you and it's trying to protect you, like, don't put yourself in that situation, get out of there. And they're coming up off the ball and bringing their head up and they're probably putting themselves more at risk of getting hit in the shins or, putting them, their body in a bad spot to field the ball cleanly because they're not watching the ball all the way in. Um, those two things can be helped by that process that I talked about. But yeah, I, um, I've, I've had that question multiple times and there's no real like, Hey, how many reps should you do here? How many reps should you do there? Again, it's a mindset. One is a mindset with after getting hit and having the reps and the time to get more comfortable with actually fielding a ball. And the other one again is it's developmental. Everybody's going to develop at a different, at a different rate. Um, and they need different things. So yeah, there's that. Um, let's see any other updates done with my little Spiel on being afraid of the ball. Groundwork tickets are still available. That's January 4th and 5th. Uh, if you don't know about that, that's my biggest clinic of the year. It's going to be at the workshop in Anaheim. The Lou Cologne event. Um, I just put the link up in my bio. Uh, that is the night of the 5th. And I haven't really posted a ton about that because I'm trying to talk about groundwork more because it's happening right before, but I'm going to be, uh, giving everybody a little bit more detail on that as well. I'm trying to think of anything else. Basically it's 
groundwork, lessons, and as always, if you are not in the area, not local, and you follow here, because I think a lot of people uh, are actually starting to tune in to Defense Club, which is my online platform, um, because I've got a lot of people from East Coast, got a lot of people from Midwest, um, just did a clinic or two organization clinics in Dripping Springs, Texas, where people had uh, been looking at my black book and defense club and knew some of the drills that we did at the clinic because of that, which is really, really cool. So if you haven't heard of that or you can't get in to see me, or if you get annoyed because I keep talking about my lessons and you can't physically be here, check out defense club. So um, I hope you guys all have a great Tuesday. See ya.